embrace kadela kata embrace kadila shabakata prende gedia shadi gedes kadeba mantebra kepro shabikatos kadila kata medebaratusia the opening of the eyes jinas kabadi kataliata grantes kadeba dida kata beran are we learning an arrival mentality when you find what you do not know humble yourself and learn humble yourself and learn humble yourself and learn reject an arrival mentality so that the word ikabod would never be used over your life and your destiny no and i have taught you that everywhere you see greatness respect it when you see greatness especially when you have access to it respect it if i have the honor of meeting any of our fathers of faith the short time for discussion that is not the time to start making any contributions no it doesn't mean i'm a dummy there are things i know but then i keep quiet because there are many things i do not know and you use the opportunity and ask questions many of you would have been wiser if you did not waste your time have you seen people who come for counseling and for 15 minutes they are teaching you they sit down and say, well, I want to tell you, there's a way God works with me. So here's how it works. Eh? Every time, January, February, he speaks to me. So God told me, this. and so you are, why are you here? You are wasting my time. You are wasting the time of other people. If you are not here to listen and learn. And meanwhile, while they are saying all that thing, you have x-rayed them by the spirit. You have found them wanting on many grounds. And yet they will not listen. Then at the end, they say, well, I just felt it in my spirit. It always comes once in a while to agree with me. Agree with you, leave this place. You are not ready to receive. Not ready to receive. You are in trouble. You are owing. You are in debt. You are confused. You are oppressed and you are saying agree with you. What is there to agree about? Koinonia, are you learning? Arrival mentality. Always give yourself to continuous learning. First Timothy chapter 4, 15 and 16. First Timothy 4, 15 and 16. Meditate upon these things, the Bible says. Give yourself wholly, not half-heartedly, wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear unto all. Verse 16. Take heed unto yourself and to doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you shall save both yourself and them that hear you. May I never get to a point as a man of God where I feel I've arrived. I've known all the mysteries. I've known everything it takes. No. The victor's path, the champion's path is the path of continuous learning. Don't just learn from fathers. Don't just learn from contemporaries also learn when it has to do with knowledge nobody has monopoly of it did you hear what i'm saying nobody has monopoly of knowledge there are things only fathers can teach there are things it is those under you one day you will be listening to a, a program something from someone perhaps someone you raised and you will hear the person communicate a dimension of truth in an interesting way and that becomes what ushers you to study hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord. Number three. Why is greatness short-lived? Why is there no longevity of impact in the life of many? Are you ready for number three? Distractions and compromises. Distractions and compromises. Galatians 5, 7 to 9. Distractions. Ye did run well. Galatians 5, 7. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Ye did run well. It's a question. He's saying you started well. What happened now that has hindered you from remaining? Verse 8. It says, This persuasion cometh not from him who calls you. That means you have something has happened to you. This is not how you started. You have exposed yourself to another influence. The last verse. 
a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Do you know what he's saying? The character of Satan is that all he needs is to introduce something small. The leaven, what do they call leaven in our day's day? Yeast. Thank you. You don't put the yeast the same size as the flour, but you just put it as little as it is and watch the wonder it will cause the entire dough to rise. That's what he's saying there. A little leaven, leaven at the whole long. Distractions. Philippians chapter 3, please. 13 to 15. Brethren, Paul is speaking. I count myself, I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, hallelujah, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. 14, I press. Someone say, I press. Let your destiny hear you. Say, I press. I press towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 15, let us therefore, he says, as many as are matured, be thus minded. You must have a mentality that you must press. No distraction. There are two dimensions to distractions. Number one, getting into areas beyond the scope of your grace is why great people go down. The first part of distraction is getting into areas beyond the scope of your grace. Ephesians 4 verse 7, a painful lesson in that area was learned in the life of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was not a marriage counselor. He did not even marry himself. Instead of him to keep quiet, he had served God faithfully. The greatest of all prophets, provided he was within the area of his grace, no power could touch him. But when he veered off, and now started talking about matters beyond the scope of his grace. His head went for it. The Bible says, but unto every one of us, listen, is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. There are men of God, there are business people, there are great people today whose downfall started. Not necessarily because of anything they did wrong, but they veered off and began to communicate along areas where grace was not given. Are we together? Yeah. This is very important. Distraction. So God gives people mandates. I'm not just talking in ministry. God gives people assignments. And chances are excellent. You see, the deception of greatness is because once grace is on you, whatever you are doing becomes so easy. You will think every other area will be like that. It is the grace of God on you that makes what you are doing easy. And then chances are excellent that people will now veer off into other areas where grace was not supplied. And they want to command the same authority. That's what gets them into trouble. There are people who have no business doing detailed teachings on finances. They don't have the grace. They could share it generally or learn from those who really have it. There are people who understand very little, perhaps about the dynamics of prayer. One of the, the major trouble in the body of Christ today is because everybody believes he has authority to teach on everything. So people stand, I can teach excellently well in an area and you will be surprised at the rubbish I will teach in another area. The ability to discern your area of grace and stay there with all humility it profits you and then it profits the body. Are we together? No matter how much I teach on relationship and family and whatever, I will never understand marriage and relationship like a woman like mommy um, Funke Adejimo and then my dear friend and brother Pastor Kingsley and his wife. It's a grace God gave them. By the time you now feel I can do it, I can do all things. You see, that statement is within the will of God. Are, are, are we learning now? Most times, that calamity graduates from pride. It starts from pride, and then we delve into areas, and we claim to be authorities in areas, and we come up with misleading information. 
when you function within the area of grace, the grace given to you insists that you remain accurate within that area. Hallelujah. <laughs> there are people who get up and make expensive risks in their lives that ruin their ministries. They just get up and produce posters, healing meetings. They go online and copy the poster that Ben Hinn used to advertise his, his meeting. Healing meeting. Expect this and that. And they stand and shout and vow if anybody lives here sick, except I'm not a man of God. And the sick people say, wow, this is wonderful. We're in a good place then. At the end of the grace, after praying, for, if you are healed, come out. Nobody comes out. You sing praise and worship. I mean, just check. Nobody, should they lie? They were not healed. If you are learning, that's all right. If you are starting, but where you claim to be an authority in healing and power, no, sir. No, sir. It's not there, period. Are we together? Many people claim things they don't have grace to defend. Distractions. Can I tell you? Be comfortable where God has kept you and serve with excellence. Never be intimidated. You are only a king within your kingdom. Don't enter another person's kingdom and fight the throne. No. In your kingdom, there is a throne for you. There is a seat for you. There is a crown for you. There is a scepter for you. Remain there. And then respect other kingdoms that you do not have access to. Hallelujah. A gentleman with, with now, just, just jokingly, I believe a nice young gentleman, he sent me a text and said, Apostle, I want you to impart grace upon me. I, wanted, I was wondering, how does that happen? He said, I want to be able to raise a song and sing. And I said, my, you know, I, I, I think I just re replied him a scripture. Let every man abide in his calling. I said, this guy is going to frustrate himself now. You will write a number of songs and not know which one to raise. Because it's not about having songs. This thing is of the spirit. There is a grace. There are people who try to sing and you know you are saying, what, why now? You would have just done whatever you are doing. Hallelujah. And then there are many, many worshippers who now try to preach too. And they sing beautifully and then they say, okay, let me share something. And you're like, ah, why did you do that? You would have just stayed where God called you. Why did you now scatter everything again? This thing is about grace. Oh, if it is not on this, your head is not there. It's as simple as that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Distraction. So the first area of distraction is not, is getting into areas beyond the scope of your grace. You must be careful. God never sends a man to do everything. God never empowers a man to do everything. There is what men like Watchman Nee will call the limitation of the body. Your heart is responsible for pumping blood, but your heart is not your brain. You can have a healthy heart and have something called brain damage, you will see act like a fool, even though your heart is empty. Am I right on that? Your heart may have a problem and your brain is still working well. You will not even just act like a fool, you will die immediately. So the various parts of your body have their function. And the reason why the whole organism functions well is because the parts of the body limit themselves. If I need to pick something by mistake, I'm, you know, I'm, my hands are full, I may use my mouth to hold the phone, but the mouth is not designed to carry things. There are times you may need to veer off temporarily because of something you need to do. But the hand is at its best when it is reaching and holding, not walking. If you use the hand to walk, you will frustrate the hand. It was not built to walk. It was built to reach. It was built to hold. Are we together? The second area of distraction and compromises is not protecting your focus or your pursuit. So we're discussing the third reason why people's greatness is short-lived. Distraction and compromises. The A part is getting into areas beyond the current scope of your grace. And then number two, not protecting our focus and pursuits. Acts chapter 6 please from verse 1. 
if you do not create systems and structures to protect your focus, eventually you will find out that you are doing many things. There are people who are doing many things in ministry, in business, in career, in destiny, and they are honestly not making any progress. As we say, jack of all trades, master of none. Acts 6 verse 1. In those days, watch this now, when the number of the disciples was multiplied. So this problem came as a result of increase, multiplication. There arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Verse 2. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples and said unto them, It is not reason that we should leave. Watch this. Leave the word of God and serve tables. Those are two kinds of ministries. Serving table is not a lesser ministry. The apostles were given the ministry of the word and prayer. And now, because an issue came as a result of the increase, they came and met them and said, listen, come and discuss this issue. Some women have been neglected. There is tribalism going on here. There is all kinds of things going on here. And the apostle said, no. Verse, verse 2 now or 3. We should leave. We shouldn't leave the walk. Don't distract our focus. He says, wherefore. These are the apostles. They were secured enough to say, listen, it's not incompetence. It's that if we find ourselves in an area where grace was not given, we will be distracted and majors will become minors and minors will become majors. It says, wherefore, brethren, look ye among you, seven men, full of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But as for us, verse 4, we will give ourselves continually, say continually, Say continually, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. I like this. Very inspiring. I submit to you with every sense of humility. There are many people, many men of God especially, their trouble started when the church expanded too much. They stopped being preachers and became administrators. Because now, millions and billions are coming into the account. Now, um, international guests are flying from all over. And now, sometimes, we men of God can be so insecure, we don't trust anybody. And we feel, I have to supervise this finance by myself. How much entered there? And before you know it, it's Sunday again. And you come to preach and say, let's just sing whatever comes from God. And you find out you are leaving your assignment because you are attending to things that are not within your area of call. Just because you are heading a vision does not mean you are the one who knows everything. You must know your area of grace and give people within the vision room under your supervision to bring out their best. Are we together? There are certain roles in this ministry. If I were the one playing it, I probably would have produced a disaster out of it. Koinonia is not excelling today just because Joshua Selman is a visionary person. It is a composite of many people's intelligence together. Are you getting the point now? Yes. It is true. And if you cannot understand and accept this, you would destroy your organization. It's why most organizations don't last. There are people who set up businesses and allow intelligent people to come and run it. They own the business, but they don't lead the business. They are humble enough to be advised, to be counseled as to how the business should go. But there are people who will sit down and die there and say, no, it is my work God gave me. And before you know it, the vision is not going well because they want to do everything. Imagine if I'm the one who is decorating this stage for you. <laughs> I know you like me because you are hearing me preach. It's because I'm staying in my area of grace. <laughs> Give me the assignment of fixing this flower and you'll be surprised. My first question is, is it necessary? <laughs> are you in church to see flowers? You see my mindset? So I will remove everything now and say you are not serious. Or I'll tell somebody, put the picture of one big Bible. Open it to maybe Psalm 1. 
Leave it there every Sunday. That's what you will see. Because my passion is to make sure you receive the word. What is my business with the flower or the color? No. Put, get this, you know this kind of Bible that looks like cake? This big Bible. Psalm 1. As you entered every Sunday, you will keep seeing it. You love the word, but you are tired of the atmosphere. No creativity. So you step out of the way and allow those God-granted grace to do that work. This is why you are celebrating what we are seeing today. Are we together? You are a great leader here. Can I tell you? Begin to examine the core area of your call and start raising people who function in every other area that is not around your core assignment so that your life becomes efficient. Efficient. Moses was about to kill himself until God gave him a strategy. This guy was counseling people from morning till night. Moses would have died a natural, he would have just died like that and God told him, no, 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 no. Jethro, his father-in-law, gave him a counsel and said, no, go and appoint people. Set up a structure. There are major issues that are your business. Train other people. Listen, as a leader, if you are not training people, you are destroying your future. You can't know too much to not need people. You will always need people for as long as you are alive and for as long as your destiny positive is alive. Distractions and compromises. Create structures, create systems that protect your focus. Hallelujah. Create structures. With all due respect, and this is my personal opinion, I don't think a man of God who is really called into ministry should have all the time every, to be everywhere, doing everything. You are in every club. You are in every group. You go and watch football on, on Saturday and then on Sunday morning, quickly before you run to church. And then after that, you are doing this one. You are, do, you are distracted by so many things. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. It's always said there are those who watch movies, but there are those who are the movie themselves that are being watched. Hallelujah. Many people are busy doing so many things. No. Hallelujah. <laughs> many, many years ago, let me tell you something. It may make you laugh. Somebody was organizing his wedding and he sent me a text that would I mind being his, um, what's that man that stands there? I said, are you okay? <laughs> My friend, go and look for people. I can pray for you. I can so go and do your thing. He said, will I mind? It's not pride. I just told him, I said, no, 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 no. no. There is an honor that priesthood carries. You think whatever you want to think. It's just the truth. Are we together? Yes. If you see me stand by a junction to your house, prizing hot corn by myself and say, Madam, I'm arguing and I'm touching the thing, I'm cleaning, I say, Abba, ma this and that. I know you will just laugh, but something will affect you. You will just say, no, it's unnecessary. Not at this level. There are some things that are not pride. It's wisdom to protect your focus. Are we together now? Yes. There are people who God has lifted, but they will go for weddings and you see them dragging souvenir dragging rice saying I have four children you gave me two come on come on man that is in honor and does not know it will perish is like a beast that perisheth hallelujah say in the name of Jesus I obtain grace to protect my focus there are a few times by the grace of God that you will see me come here. I think it's only maybe once, twice. Usually it's during the graduation of the School of Ministry students. I don't come here to come and check. Have they said the sound well? No. If we're starting ministry, that's fine. But at this level, systems have been created. There are great, loyal, faithful, and gifted people that God has brought in this ministry. And I allow them to do their work while I settle down to bring you the word. Are we together now? Yes. That's why when I come, I sit down quietly as they are taking the testimonies 
I sit down quietly and, and receive. As my precious worship team people are leading worship, I sit down and allow them. Mine is to create the, the, a template for them and it's the assignment to stay with God. Imagine if I was the one giving them songs every week. You will soon be tired. You will know I'm the one giving the songs. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're enjoying their creativity because we give them that autonomy to stay with God. Yours is to teach them to be spiritual and how to receive. Hallelujah. Protect your focus. There are levels in life where not... And I'm saying it to... Down to many, there are certain things at your level. If God has honestly lifted you, they will become distractions. Like washing your car by yourself. You would think it's humility, but there is a way if God has lifted you. That two hours to wash your car or three hours to wash your clothes. You are blessed. Look for somebody, employ somebody, take it to a dry cleaner and have the time to pray and focus on what you should do. It's as simple as that. There are things in my life I will never do again. I can do them, but I will not do them. It's a distraction. Don't copy me if you are starting. I wash my clothes, so I did everything by myself before I started. I'm bringing this balance because sometimes people hear all kinds of things in church. Someone will now go and say, you know what? I've made up my mind. And then before you know it, in one month, especially in this our lovely Abuja, your whole money will go into dry cleaning. If you are learning, say amen. amen. 